to you. Exactly. It irritates and it so annoys the heck out of me. Yeah, yeah like you keep wondering it. what happened. Like, guys, have the decency to respond after exactly. an interview. So, so like, I wouldn't respond and then I would be like, well, two months, three months, well, Yeah, you forget forward. about it. Yeah, that's I give right. myself, I give myself a 90 day rule. Oh. If after 90 days I don't hear from them, I assume it's, it's done. It's done. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Priscilla. For those who are not subscribed here, for those who are tuning in for the first time, please subscribe. Uh, I make videos on career, travel and lifestyle. I post, I'm doing a very interesting series called 32 Amplify and I post every Tuesday at 1 p.m. I'm hosting women that even I am like, wow, how do I know these people? So please make sure you subscribe. For my day ones have been with me since for like about two people. <laughs> you guys are a dream team. Thank you so much. I don't take that for granted. Today, I'm hosting a person who I'm talking about a topic that I've talked about before. So I thought I'd bring in someone who can also share her insights. So I made a video on how I was unemployed for six months. If you don't watched it, please go and watch it. And I also shared some tips on how to overcome and how to go through that process. Uh, but today I'm hosting a friend of mine called Martha. I've known Martha mm -hmm. since our days at uh, campus. But we became yeah. close after campus. Like that's the irony of life. But anyway, so Martha, you're very welcome to my YouTube Thank channel. Thank you for having me, Priscilla. Hi, subscribers. Yay. <laughs> so Martha, do you want to tell us something that's unique about yourself? I, this is something I do with all my guests, so mm -hmm. feel free. And I know you may feel a bit nervous, but don't worry. I'm going to start breathe. talking. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. breathe in and breathe out. My, my subscribers are very welcome. So yeah, tell us about yourself. Hey, subscribers. And if you've not subscribed, please subscribe. Guys, like, Kobe. Yeah, women supporting women. Support. What? <laughs> uh, my name is Mata Agaba Semakula. Um, I'm a mother of two beautiful girls. Wow. Yes. Um, I'm a wife. And I'm also a lawyer, just like Priscilla. Yeah, guys, I'm so sorry that we haven't just too many lawyers, but I mean, that's my reality. <laughs> yeah, so I'm a program analyst and I work with UN Women. And, well, I think that's it about me for yeah. now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Martha, for sharing. So I want to just explore. Uh, a talk, uh, you, I've been unemployed before and I've shared about it. Yeah. Uh, you also were unemployed when you came back from your master's, which mm. is very similar to what happened to me. Yeah. So do you want to just give us a bit of an insight, just for very briefly, how what happened, how you went through that? Well, to start with, I know it's always not easy. Even just to talk about it. Yeah, and, the memories. Know, the flashbacks <laughs> and all. It's not easy, especially if you're this person who likes working yeah. and, you know, is a busy, busy person. Yeah. Well, so I was I was so lucky that I got a scholarship. Mm. I traveled to Ireland yeah. with my master's in international human rights law yeah. and public policy. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I came back, well, then I was working with an organization, an NGO um, that fights for women's rights. Yeah. So when I got back, well, before I went, the key thing was you have to come back to your job. Ah, so that's what the scholarship said. Yes. Okay. You have to come back to your job, either to your position or a position higher. It oh. was like mandatory. Pressure. They wouldn't <laughs> give you that. They wouldn't give you the scholarship. So at that time, my <laughs> EDU wrote the letter. Yeah. Supported my documents. And yeah. by the grace of God, yeah. I was among the lucky ones that traveled to Ireland. Yeah. Did my master's for a year. Wow. And then on return... You know that whole thing when you're back from, you know? Expectations be high. To the roof, to the roof. <laughs> With your master's degree from abroad. You know, <laughs> like, you just feel you want to take over the world. You want to solve all the problems. Yeah, the you have world. such a zeal. Exactly. And with all these human rights issues. Yeah. Trafficking, name it. You just want to, you know? So when I returned, I was supposed to go back to my work. Yeah. Yeah. And then reaching there, well... A little to take you back. We yeah. had um, when I when I traveled to do my masters, we I was I was put off leave. I was told to get off. Yeah, and I just had to apply for study leave. Okay, so I took the study leave. Yeah, and when I came back, I was not on the payroll. Mm. So I was told, well, you can come back and let's figure out something for you. Mm. So I get back, and my position is not there. Oh wow! That it, was disappointment. One. It was scrapped. 
Well, they had put in a temporary person to oh, okay. cover up yeah, for me. Yeah. And it so happened that the temporary person was a relative to the Indian. Oh, yeah. So they couldn't. Yeah. They put, yeah. Oh, my God. So I was told probably there'll be opportunities yeah. um, ahead when funding comes in, mm. but to stick around. Yeah. So here I was back to literally like square one. Right where you said just before you went for your master's. I was a program officer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now you are unemployed. Managing a whole program. Oh, wow. That was yes. nice. That must have been a very interesting job. It was. Yeah. It was quite interesting. Yeah. I had networked, you know, I was living it at this booming point. Yeah. But I was like, well, let me go study, come back mm. and yeah. do much better. Yeah. So I get to work and one, my position is taken and I'm back to, you know, looking for work and here and there. Yeah. So they threw so much work at me. Yeah. I did because mm. I was grateful that the job I got the scholarship because of the work I was doing. So I I go ahead and do all the work, and there are times I'd leave like at eight. Oh, wow, eight p.m. Eight p.m. Wow, eight p.m. Seven. PM, and how much were you being nine. paid? <laughs> <laughs> it's so embarrassing to say I was put on an allowance. What? Remember, I was off the payroll. Yeah. Where I was earning my six digits. Salary. Earning, yes, I was earning good money. And then when I come back, I'm being given a mere allowance. Wow. Yeah. That must have been very heartbreaking. It was so heartbreaking. You guys. So take us through the process of looking for your dream job. I, how was it? So I, I, I continued working in the organization for about three, four, five months. Yeah. And there was no change. I was literally spending on all my savings. I used to tap into them because I'd drive to work, I'd have to feed, mm. and you know, so I kept depleting all my savings. And yeah, I was like I was not seeing light at the end of the yeah. tunnel. Yeah, yeah. So I just took that brief decision, you know, decision, and I'm like, I'm, I'm resigning. Done. Oh, wow. I'm done. I think I deserve better. Yeah, yeah. Because I was always going home so frustrated. Yeah, you were sad. I was sad. You know, and literally, I was home and I could not talk to my husband about it. Yeah. I didn't know how to open up because mm. every time we'd start that conversation, oh, how is work? It would always be an excuse. Like, yeah. um, you know, you're always trying to make an excuse. Yeah, because you didn't it. want to just be really vulnerable about the situation. Exactly. So anyways, I threw in the towel. I didn't even have a job then. And I was like, that's it. So I resigned. Now, the job hunting. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> God. I don't know about your experience. Priscilla, my ex- I'm sure my, I mean, you guys have watched that video on, on my job hunting. Yo, rejection That's upon crazy. rejection. Even for jobs that you meet the criteria, you're like, this exactly. one I'm getting. No, you even you actually know? go to some, apply and then reach some. You do the interviews and they tell you, too qualified. Some say that like we can't take there's, it there's, you're too there's someone who said, I'm too young. <laughs> I have never been pissed in my job hunting season like that. Oh my God. So what kept you going after all those rejections? Like, why did you keep pushing and pushing and pushing? Because, well, sitting home is not my cup of tea. Yeah. Yeah. I found it so difficult. I think at a certain point, I felt I was going into depression. Yeah. I would say a bit, a mini depression of sorts, because you'd throw in applications, you'd apply, yeah. I'd buy bundles of internet. <laughs> Oh, you know, I used to just get out of home, yeah. sit somewhere yeah. and apply and apply and apply and apply. And nothing And sometimes you'd be lucky they would get yeah. back to you, go do the written interview, wait for the oral, nothing. Yeah, nothing. And you know, there's this, I don't know, this very bad trend. Of people don't get back to you. Exactly. It irritates and it so annoys the heck out of me. Yeah, like you keep wondering it. what happened. Like, guys, have the decency to respond after exactly. an interview. So... So like, I wouldn't respond, and then I'd be like, "Well, two months, three months." Well, yeah, you forget forward. about it. Yeah, yes, I give yes. myself, I give myself a ninety-day rule. Oh. If after ninety days I don't hear from them, I assume it's it's done. It's done. So I mean, now I know you got your dream job working with the UN. Congratulations! Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That so, was it. Easy, so how was that experience? Because I know part of the I know very many people really want to work with the United Nations. So yeah. how was your experience? Well, as I kept job hunting. I kept seeing adverts on yeah. Yeah, the UN, the UN jobs. And I kept feeling, oh, well, I think um, this job is me. This is me. Yeah, Let me apply. Yeah. 
And I remember one time I was driving, I think around Lugogo, yeah. at the lights, and this UN car parked. And oh, wow. And, 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 you, and you said, like, that's me. Being driven, and I <laughs> said, God, that's me. That is me one day. So and you are like imagine, visionizing I yourself in that, exactly. in that dream. I remember I talked about imagining. Yeah, like, oh my God, I'm a huge fan of the power of imagination. Exactly. Yeah. And I turn, and the ladies on her phone all looking nice. Yeah. And I'm <laughs> like, Jesus, that is me. So. Right, like, you know, you gotta do, you're gonna make this work. Yeah. So I kept on applying. I kept on applying and by the grace of God I yeah. was able to get shortlisted yeah. well they contacted me yeah. and funny enough usually you go to the offices yeah. to do the written interview first mm. then you make it you go do the oral. Call for oral yeah. so I've been sent an email with a date when to come in and do my written mm. and then just that early morning as I'm preparing um, I was told oh change your plan yeah. we're going to do it via e- via Zoom email or email yeah like we'll send the questions then you'll be able to within an hour and send back yeah and i'm like okay this is interesting <laughs> so there's a different told, modality if you get onto internet they'll be able to know like yeah. you know, if you're trying to, yeah, look to look for answers <laughs> you guys i read for this do you know like how we used to read <laughs> like overnight like you put your feet in water so you don't sleep <laughs> prepared for this job because i was like god this is my this time is, to shine my time to shine wow. I've sat home, i think i sat home for around eight months what yeah that's not easy it isn't so i practiced prepared you know you'd literally I read, I googled about the UN. Yeah, like, the mandate of UN and like, you know what they do. You know, and, all those things. Yeah, yeah, wow. So I eventually went did the written interview. And when I did it, I waited. And then, you know, there's that whole way. Yeah, the wait get process. Back to you. Yeah, because I mean, you so many people have done the interview. Yeah. So I took, I think, up around three, four months. Yeah. And then, boom, I get an email. You've been shortlisted to do that oral. I was like, God, this is me getting this job. Yeah. So, huh, the oral, I prepare myself. You know, it's always good to dress for the job. Regardless yeah. of, don't take, don't don't take, take chances. Yeah. Exactly. So I pull out my suit, brushed it that I had not worn in, in like, so long. You know, yeah, exactly. In so long. And then I go, I get in. And at that point, when I entered for the oral, I think we're around only four. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're only four people, and I was the last and the youngest. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was sitting <laughs> with PDs, yeah. PhD holders. Oh, my God. Doc, and you're like, just doctors, like, oh, what am I doing here? I'm like, oh, geez, <laughs> is this me? And I started panicking and all. But then I kept telling myself, relax, yeah. if this is your job. It is yours. So anyway, I eventually got, I eventually got in. Yeah. Uh, the interview went well. And I think after a couple of weeks, they go back to you. They go back to me. Wow. Telling me, you oh, got the job. Take, take, take us through that, that, oh that moment God. when you open that email and you see that, dear, dear Martha Agava, this, we read to congratulate you on being a successful candidate. How did that you guys, feel? I jumped, right? I, <laughs> I And you know, they send the appointment later. Yeah. And I think at that point, um, the lady was trying to call. Was trying to call me to yeah. tell me the good news. Yeah. But for some reason, my phone was in silence. Yeah. So she called. Like, I phone like five missed calls from a number I didn't know. Yeah. Like, Who are these talking? Then me? she writes an email and says, "I'm trying to get to you." Yeah. Then she says, "Anyway, you've you've been a successful candidate." Oh my god! Oh, I, 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 my heart is. Oh! Are you guys like my heart is like <laughs> ah. Yes. Wow. I'm so excited. Yeah. As I just don't know, I was just over the moon. Yeah. I'm so happy about it. Yeah. Um. And then I was told to probably go to the office. Yeah, so you started doing the admin and, and the processes. Before even the processes, yeah. opening the letter to look at the salary, uh, the allowances, uh-huh. the benefits. <laughs> Guys, uh, I think, Martha, you should adopt me at this rate. <laughs> look who's talking. You're you, should awesome. a, you should adopt me at this rate. So, I mean, for my subscribers who have a dream to work with the United Nations, yeah. uh, what are some of the things that you would, uh, you would you'd like, two, two key takeaways for them? Well, takeaways for them... Um, well, one key thing is you have to have a master. Truth be told, that's like the first key thing. If you look at all their, um, applications they put out there, the adverts, sorry, they put out there, the first thing you look out for is, they look out for is a master. Yeah. So I was blessed that I had that. And just to encourage the young subscribers, I think Priscilla has hosted Math and other people on the show who've talked about, uh, uh, applying for scholarships yeah. or saving up to 
you know, go do your master's. I mean, the world is just getting more and more competitive. True. So if you really want the job, I mean, sometimes you just have to put in the hard work. Mm. So for me, it would be to encourage you. If you get an opportunity, I was I I, I, I almost gave up on looking for scholarships. Yeah. It wasn't easy. Yeah. But at my fourth attempt, you I got was it. To, yeah. You know, get a scholarship. Yeah. So and if you don't have that patience, well, save up and you know go back to school. Yeah. And get it or you know look into further education because mm. this is where we're going now yeah, everyone yeah. has a degree that's true it's very competitive it's very stiff yeah so for the un unfortunately that's the key thing they look out for and then well if you have your masters that would be a good stepping stone for mm. you and then also i would encourage you to i don't know if it's subscribing to the online platforms where they advertise. Yeah, like Relief Web, uh, exactly. DevEx. Yes. Uh, you For know. UN in Uganda, it's UNDP jobs. Yeah. So I remember going online in my job hunting and I came across UNDP jobs. And usually they put down comment like, I don't know, a box where you you asked if you want to, mm, to keep receiving the emails. Exactly. Okay. Keep getting alerts or, you know, and that's how I was able to. Uh, chance on this job mm. and other adverts out there so just try and go and as you're looking for these jobs yeah just click onto that box sometimes we get so busy yeah that's true oh you're doing so much but once you open your email and, and you, you see the jobs it, then you can apply then you can apply yeah you can even know when is the yeah deadline. when the deadline is and then lastly i know sometimes you look at these jobs and for the un getting in is the hardest Thing. Yeah, you'll have very many people who tell you, "Oh my God, I have applied. I have applied and given up." Yeah, yeah. And sometimes when they advertise these jobs, they put them in very far off areas. Yeah. Sometimes you go, be, go. Arua, Moroto. You're like, oh, how do I see myself going to Yumbe? Yeah. But I've had friends who have got in and within a year, yeah, they're back to Kampala. That's true. So the getting in is always the hardest thing. But I mean, if you if you don't really have so much responsibilities on you yeah or it's something you want to see in your career growth give it a shot yeah and go in and work and usually when you're once you're in into the system uh getting like when they advertise you're the first people they consider for mm. this yeah so you could be lucky and you could be transferred um to kampala and you know or wherever yeah, yeah. Wow, Martha, yeah. thank you so much for sharing. I, I mean, I have a video on how I manifested my dream <laughs> job. So I am very passionate about people just following their dreams and just taking a chance on life because you just yeah. never know what's around the corner. So you guys, thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. If you don't yet have subscribed, I honestly Please do not do know. Like, I don't know you guys anyway. So thank you so much for coming. See you again. Ciao. Ciao.